Well, hello there. I almost didn't notice you come in. It's great to see you all. Um, and happy that we're going to be progressing our knowledge of arithmetic and geometric sequences and adding this idea of a series. Series are where you take a sequence and add the whole thing together. Add all the terms together. And there's a few different reasons why you might want to do this. Um, we're going to see some next week when we start looking at uh, particularly investments. Uh, annuities are an investment strategy that a lot of people use, uh, myself included, where every month or every regular period of time, you save a little bit of your paycheck and you put that into an interest-bearing savings account or some kind of interest-bearing investment product. So the deposit you make on day one is worth more than the deposit you make on day 100 because it has more time to uh, grow its interest. Adding together the sum of all those deposits seems like a mind-melting task unless you understand geometric series, which makes it a simple formula, which we're going to use in finance. We'll take a look at some examples today as well. So um, sequences versus series. A series is just the sum of a sequence. So that's an idea that we're going to want to have for today's lesson. Let's keep going. So the first formula that you're going to want to make sure you get onto your page is the sum of an arithmetic series. My anticipation is that most of you are the, I'm going to memorize this or have it on my cheat sheet types. But later on, I will uh, derive the formula for you. I'll show you what you can do if you forget it and you don't have access to Google or something like that. How you can rebuild this yourself just based on um, the general term. So just to recall, the general term for an arithmetic series is Tn is equal to the first term plus n minus 1 times the common difference. So that's the, the general term that generates a sequence. If we add all those together, you'll find that the sum of the first n terms, so this tells you how many terms we're adding together of that sequence, is going to be equal to the number of terms divided by 2 multiplied by 2 times the first term plus n minus 1 times d. The number of terms minus 1 multiplied by the common difference. Those are all our bits there. If you are adding together a geometric series, they look like this. Where, again, you have the sum of the first n terms is equal to the first term multiplied by 1 minus the common ratio to the power n, all divided by 1 minus the common ratio. So uh, let's just recall here. A is the first term in both. If you have a D, that's the common difference. And uh, R is the common ratio. Note that uh, an arithmetic sequence has a common difference, a geometric sequence has a common ratio, and you'll only see one or the other. And uh, n is the number of terms. So I'm going to try and commit these to memory and continue with the lesson. There we go. So. Let's take a look at uh, an example of an arithmetic sequence, an arithmetic series. Here we have a given sequence, and we want to add together the first 16 terms. Okay, So I'm going to note that A is my first term, 20. I can see that the common difference, <clears throat> I can get that by subtracting this one from this one. And so I can see that it's 7. I'm adding 7 each time. Even if I use this one and this one, I'd still see I'm adding 7. doesn't matter which one I use. The common difference is 7. And the number of terms that I've been asked to add together is 16. So first thing that you're going to do is copy out your formula. S of n is equal to n over 2 multiplied by 2 times the first term plus n minus 1 multiplied by d. And then check your formula, see if you remembered it correctly. Oh, I did. Cool. All right. And now 
plug in and chug in. That's all you're going to do. Okay. So let's go for it. S of n is equal to n over 2. So now we substitute in. This is 16. S of 16. I should have that in there as well. S of 16 is 16. Is equal to 16 divided by 2. Multiplied by 2 times the first term, 20. Plus 16 minus 1 is n minus 1 times the common difference, which is 7. All right. So let's go. Simplify wherever you can. So there's a few things that I can do in my first line of simplifications. 16 divided by 2 is 8. 2 times 20, I can do that. So that's 40. I can't, uh, I can do this um, in the brackets there, 15. 15 times 7. Let's do that in a single line, or do you want to see me write that out, 15 times 7? Single line is okay? Okay, 15 times 7 happens to be 105. Right? He says, he's asking. Yes, and I'm, I'm right. Yes, yes. 40 plus 105. Cool. And then uh, that will be 145 times 8. 145 times 8. Let's write it out. 8 times 145 is 800. Uh, it's, uh, 13, 16. 16. Is that right? Why, okay. why don't you have to use Where? I did. I just added what was in the brackets together already. Matter, when I have something like uh, 3 times x plus y, because I don't know what x and y are yet, I need to write that as like 3x plus 3y. But here, because I know what 40 plus 105 is, I can just do that. And then I can do that. If I did it the other way, if I did 8 times 40, that would be 320. And then 8 times 105, it would be 840. And then I add those two together, and that give me the same thing. And once you start seeing those and playing with those, it gives you a lot of avenues for your mental math. It's really useful. I actually found doing that calculation easier than doing the addition first and then the multiplication. Yeah? 8 times 145 is 8,160. Oh, yes. I carried the 2 twice. Thank you. So there you go. And that's what your calculator will tell you is true. So that's how you add these together. Okay. Here you go. So now let's figure out this Greek theater. One thing that can help is draw a picture. Here is the first row. It has 30 seats. And every one after that, that's 32 seats, 34 seats, and dot, 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 13 rows. Okay. So I can imagine, well, how many seats are going to be in that last row? Well, I could use TN and find out. And so TN, my general term for this would be the first term, 30 seats, plus N minus 1 times uh, the common difference, which is 2. In this case, we have 13 rows. So that's going to be 30 plus uh, 12 times 2, because N minus 1, 13 minus 1 is 12. So it's going to be 54 in this last row, 54 of them. Okay. Now we want to know how many seats in total. So let's use our, uh, make a little chart. A is equal to 30. That's our first term. D is the common difference. There's two more in each row. And the number of rows is 13. So we would do SN is equal to N over 2 multiplied by 2A plus N minus 1 times D. That's our formula, right? And then you check it and make sure. You can do the check and make sure while you're practicing. On a, on a test, you want to have that memorized. And then go ahead and uh, substitute in your different uh, variables. So S, the sum of the 13 rows, is going to be 13 divided by 2 multiplied by 2 times 30 plus N minus 1 is 13 minus 1 multiplied by 2. Now, here's a trick. 2 is a common factor for both of those terms inside the bracket. 
and I see I'm dividing by two outside the bracket. I could cancel all those twos. So that would this would be a time where I would apply the distributive property if I was if I was doing this in my head to make the arithmetic easier. But this is at the level of crunching your calculator. So you can crunch this in your calculator, or you can do it the fancy without a calculator method of cancel all those twos by factoring them out. So I see that those twos are common factors, and now I have a, a simpler line to work on mental math wise. Do people have it crunched yet? 13 times 30 plus 12. 13 times 30 plus 12 is, yes, this is what I did, 13 times 42. Uh, 13 times 42, what did I say it was in the morning? Did I make any, did I get anything right? Uh, that's, what is it? 546, yeah, that's what I had. Let's see. 546, well, that is this, that is the center section. For 30 months. seats in the front row of the center section. Each row behind the first row gains two additional seats. It's just the center section. There might be another section over here, Oscar, and another section over here. Yeah, it's just, oh, this is the center section. Oh, I thought it meant like row seven. Mm -hmm. No, oh. not, in the, not in the middle row. In the middle row, this is still an interesting question. It would be the average of the, the yeah. biggest row and the smallest row, right. but uh, still. So this is how many seats are in that theater, 546. So that's important if you're planning your uh, uh, planning a party or something in that area. Now let's add together some geometric series. Uh, again, you're going to see these in finance. You'll see them a lot. Your mo uh, mortgages work this way, car payments work this way, and uh, annuities work this way. So very common interest-bearing products that you're going to encounter in your life are going to use formulas similar to this. They're going to be simple. These the formulas we're going to use in finance are going to be simplified for finance, but this is the backbone. So if I want to add together this series, I first have to rec add together this sequence and add the series together. I have to recognize that it's geometric, that I'm multiplying by two each time. So I multiply by two, I multiply by two, I multiply by two to get each next term. So my A, my first term is three. My R, my common ratio is two and the number of terms I've been asked to add 12 terms together. So let's do that. Okay, so we remember that S of N for a geometric series is the first term multiplied by one minus R to the N, all divided by one minus R. And then you go ahead and you check and make sure you have the formula right. I do. Okay. Now, go ahead and plug in. So the sum of the first 12 numbers is going to be equal to 3 multiplied by 1 minus 2 to the 12, all divided by 1 minus 2. Right? Notice that 1 minus 2 to the 12 is going to be a negative number, because 2 to the 12 is much bigger than 1. And 1 minus 2 is also a negative number. So that's how this is going to be negative divided by a negative to give us a positive. So uh, at this point... There's not really a mental math shortcut. Just chug it on your calculator. 1 minus 2 raised to the power 12 equals that number multiplied by 3. That's the top of the fraction. Divide by 1, but it's negative because 1 minus 2 is negative 1. There is this number. 12,285. We were expecting a positive number. We got a positive number, so we're happy about that. And I think we could have guessed here and guessed a rather large number because this is a geometric series growing quite big. Half of the sum of the series is the last term. The last term is the majority of it. It's not quite, no, it's a third of it. Anyway, let's keep, no, no, that's true. Yeah. All right, cool. All right. And let's take a look at a word problem that uh, shows how you can already start connecting this to things that you'll see in the world. Uh, Derek, he's got a, got a, maybe this uh, PowerPoint's a little old, but that would have been a decent starting salary uh, several years ago. Um, actually, it's, it's still, it's not bad. You can, you can get by with that. Uh, and every year he gets a 3% race. All right, so let's take a look. Would this be better to graph it like exponential? <laughs> This, uh, this, his, his earnings will grow exponentially. 
And that if we graph it, we could find like, let's say we looked here at the 25th year, we would find what's his income for the 25th year. What we've been asked to find out is how, what are his total earnings over his whole career? So like add that together with that, together with that, together with that, together with that, together with that. Now you could use Desmos and look at that graph and then, you know, do 25 additions on your calculator, but there's a smoother way and that's to use a formula. So the smoother way would be to say, okay, A, my first term is 35,000. My common ratio is going to be, well, what's the common ratio? Anyone tell me? 0 0.03, very good. Sorry, 1.03, 1.03. Because it grows by 3% into the next year. So you're gonna be multiplying by 103% every year. See how that exponential function stuff comes back, right? Yeah. yeah. So R is 1.03, which is 1 plus 0 0.03. That's the uh, percent growth as a decimal. So it's an example of exponential growth. And we definitely want that R to be greater than 1 to have growth. And then the N number of terms is 25. So let's go. The sum of a geometric series is given by this formula. A is one A multiplied by one minus the ratio to the power N, all divided by one minus the ratio. Write your formulas out every time. And then sub in your numbers. So here we will have the sum of the first 25 terms, the first 25 years of his earnings is going to be equal to $35,000. And he earns in his first year multiplied by 1 minus 1.03 raised to the power 25 all over 1 minus 1.03 okay and now i would chug that on a calculator all in one go mm, no it won't this is a negative number this is also a negative number because negative divided by a negative makes it positive. Oh, when you do 1.03 to the 25, it's a negative, negative 1.03 to the 25 becomes a positive. So you yeah. Can that. This is, a, it's not, yeah, and, yeah. And remember, this negative here, this is important to, to note. This negative here does not come along for the exponent ride. That does not go along for the exponent ride. In this case, it doesn't make a difference. You still get a negative, but uh, if, if that was an even number of years, like 24, it doesn't flip to positive. And starting with a guess, like Oscar did, I expect he earned some positive amount of money over the first 25 years of his career. Uh, that helps guide your answer if you do end up getting a, uh, a negative answer. So I'm gonna start in the bracket, one minus 1.03 raised to the power 25 equals negative 1.09. So that's what's inside the bracket up there. I multiply that by 35,000. That's the top of the fraction, negative 38,000, blah, blah, blah. It's not a meaningful number at this point. Now I divide it by, put in brackets, 1 minus 1.03 and the bracket equals, there we go, uh, 1 million two hundred and seventy six thousand seventy four dollars and I can't remember the cents 25 and 25 cents you can buy a house and make a phone call there you go so that's how you use these two formulas so try uh, oh ignore that Yeah. Hold that on people. Yeah. Yeah. Practices. And practice from yesterday. I know we didn't get that much time to practice yesterday. And any questions, Team Learn Home, hit me up by email.